sharper. I tried turning down the frames per second and turning up the resolution. And we'll see if it can work a little better for a display, for programming. It's not exactly high speed. And once that comes back, we'll see if it's any good. Can I get in there? Am I watching it? Can't tell. Streaming is happening. Shmanzi, my channel. This is the live one. Yeah. I see that. That looks a fair amount better. I would say. So let's try that. Still using Twitch Studio here. What can we say about that? Uh, right, so we wanted to try SSHFS without anything in home trees, and I'm gambling pretty strongly. This is not the right IP address. So, let's move trees to trees. Uh, gold. It's a clever, clever name. And then here we go for SSHFS mount if needed. Ah, oh, you really really need it. Uh, there's one more argument that I have to take out, and it's this one, apparently. Now it should fail for network reasons. Yeah, the text looks sort of okay. Yeah, BSD, I could say control T, and it would help me see what's going on. I don't have that here. Control C works, though. So what we're going to do, I happen to know the host is... Probably still reachable by a pet power plant. Yeah. So we should call it that. Then we can have an SSH key problem. That IP made sense when you were a virtual machine running in a NAT provided by VirtualBox. But we are a real machine running on the same local network as that host. Yeah, this should fail for SSHFS reasons. Before we go any further, how do we get some verbosity out of SSHFS? Dash V. Okay. I say, let's do that. SSHFS. Verbose. Unknown option for both. I could have sworn I saw that. All right, play an old V. Don't have to tell me twice. You do do have to have me try to type it a bunch of times. Hey. Okay. I will accept a host key. I'm pretty sure it's fine. I don't want to be getting into password typing. I do want to have an SSH key pair that I use for this purpose. So let's pop out of there. Uh, do I have any SSH agent running that I'm aware of? I don't think so. Uh-huh, I sure don't. So in that case, I would like to... 
Mm, my choices for passwordless SSH as the BuildBox user. Uh, a terrible option is to go into the BuildBox Unix account and remove the password. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I have to change a lot of other places too. <laughs> also, it's a terrible idea. Or I could make a key pair. Oh, I might have had a good idea. Or I could make a key pair for this Raspberry Pi and then grant its public key to be authorized to build box. That's okay. Or uh, it might work because the only way that I can get to this machine is SSHing through uh, the old terminology for it was a bastion host. It's the machine, there's only one machine that is reachable from the internet on this network. That's why I went into power plant. And that's the machine we're going back to as it happens. So maybe, let's take a look. If I'm on pet power plant, which I got to by coming from my machine, then we have this host key, which I propose to you may be, I don't know if this is a good way to tell, may match this one. <laughs> I definitely don't know if that's a good way to tell. Uh, but maybe it would also be available in my own agent. That's a good way to tell. Yeah. So, check it out. On the left, I'm on my laptop, Magnetic Babysitter. And I asked my laptop from its SSH agent, do I have a key loaded? I do. I have a 2048-bit RSA key with this SHA-256. And I'm not reading every last character, but it definitely looks the same as what I have on the remote host, Pet Power Plant, because I have SSH agent forwarding in place. And that's why even though I don't have the same, I don't have any key pair on Pet Power Plant, it's just a build box, uh, it can use my credentials from the machine that I SSH'd into it from. So that's what I'm thinking could be a good idea here too. And the reason I think that is that if we look at authorized keys, that is one. This this we can do the way that I was doing it before. That's the same key. You see that? On the left is the key, the public key of my laptop's SSH key pair. And on the right, is exactly verbatim the same thing, which is what authorizes me to come from this laptop into that build box without a passphrase. So I think my most elegant idea, avoiding the need to make any more SSH key pairs and preserving the trust relationship that's already there, is to extend the SSH agent forwarding from pet power plant to schleier pie and now i have to remember how i did that in the first place but i think i mean you saw from buildbox i can go in password list to schleier pie that is the ssh key forwarded from my laptop to let us do that so I just need to forward it once more, and I think that's a function of the SSH server config, which I imagine is someplace like this. Is there anything in here? Beep, 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 no, okay. Um, I'm gonna look for the word agent or the word forwarding. Yeah, and while we're at it, I'm not sure what I just typed. Let's get out of here. While we're at it, let's compare what I must have done on Pet Power Plant. SSHD config. Do I have anything in here? What's that? Oh, no. That's nothing useful. Okay. 
that's something from Apple, but I must have done something about forwarding or agent. Allow agent forwarding, yes, TCP forwarding. Oh, I bet it's not in the server at all. I bet it's a client setting to request it that has to be turned on. That's even easier. In that case, we could look at my SSH config. Forward agent, yes. Check that out. Pet power plant. Forward agent, yes. So this is easier than I thought. On pet power plant, do I have an SSH config? I do. It's very familiar. And almost all these things are already forwarding agent. What about Schleier Pi? No? Let's make one for that, shall we? Do I have anything for build box? Yeah, okay. Host, sh host Schleier Pi. I'm just going to copy an existing stanza. Schleier Pi. The host name is not localhost, it's Schleier Pi. And I don't need a special port. And I do want forward agent. Let's see if that does it. So for comparison, I already SSH'd here. Nothing got forwarded. Let's do another one. Yeah. Look at that. This is promising. So now, let's end the session that is less qualified. And now if I do, and uh, what did I call it, SSHFS mount if needed, might even work. Not quite, but what do we got? Stuff is mounted. Yep. Let's clear the screen and get a good look. Uh, not QMail and IkiWiki are both mounted. I don't know how well, but they are. Uh, package source didn't. It gave some kind of an error. Let's look at that again, if we can. No such file or directory. Oh yeah, because I don't call it that anymore. I call it package source get. And so at the end of this command, I should have all three of them. Indeed I do. So I can go into trees. Package source current isn't anything, but package source get is now I have this user mapping problem the files are here I probably can't make anything yeah hey, good that's cool uh, maybe it's fine actually in that case but what my git history was telling me over here from when I used to have SSHFS is that I had a couple files that I would give to SSHFS so it could map my local username to the remote user ID and likewise for groups. And that would be cool if we could do it. Yes, you can see 502 and I bet if we look for dial out in Etsy group, it's gonna be number 20. Yeah, you see that? So I think what SSHFS can do if I give it these files is understand and map that these IDs are for my non-privileged user. Um, what kind of groups do I belong to? Yeah, I belong to Schmanz. So let's see if we can tweak that up a little bit. Uh, I'll CD up. I will, uh, I think I can just U mount IkiWiki, will that work? Yeah, I do like that. And this I bet is just 
just a f directory to remove. And it is, and that's why you have to say remdir. Now I should be nice and empty in here, except for the mount points. Okay, yeah, the mount points persist, but that's it. Uh, good. Okay. I have one more good idea here, and that's that I've overdone it. I can simplify the script because I would be happy to let everything in the trees directory be mounted here. I don't need to limit it. Just mount all of trees. So let's... AirPods that do whatever the fuck they want. Excuse my language. I do not care for that. Am I here with the right sound? Yeah, okay. That's probably fine. Uh, yeah, so I want to render IkiWiki and now QMail and package source git and come on up out of here and edit. Yeah, this one and simplify. I just want to mount all of trees to all of trees. And so I don't want any of that. I'm just going to say, yeah, let's do this. And from is just going to be the first bit. Yeah, and so either all of trees is mounted because we see the telltale in it, package source git and a particular file there, <laughs> or none of trees is mounted, in which case we'll create it. And then we will mount it. Okay, I feel like this ought to work. Seems like it. Yeah, so those are all those trees. Now again, we have the permission problem, but I think we have the solution. Whoops, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Uh, yeah, so let's new mount trees. That's a lot easier, doing just one. And now we need those UIDs and GIDs. So what does the script want us to do with those? It wants us, we had this right about here. I'll take that out. I had that right about there with the trailer. And so this must have been in home Etsy. Do I have a home Etsy? Probably not yet. So now when I run it, I'll get that error from before about not even going to try to SSHFS because you're a doofus. And now, these look like the simplest files in the world. This is called SSHFS GIDs, and it should contain schmanz colon 20 for the group. And the other one is called SSHFS UIDs, and it should contain schmanz 502 in there. Those are those things. Uh, 
Ah, okay. So you probably didn't do them out. They're saying that those things in Etsy needed to be owned by Root. We can do it. Huh. What do we have? Stuff mounted on trees. I look like the guy. That's in that's an SSHFS mounted directory. Here's in the physical directory. Not bad. I have a couple of things left to do before I can blow away trees.old and say that this is how I want to work. Uh, one is I need it to happen every time I log in. And for that, first we'll do a U mount. Can I do it as me? No, of course not. And then add this command to my profile. Is there a bash profile? What have I done in bash RC? Anything? Just wondering where I did my package source path stuff. Okay, I'm just going to put it in profile because that's where you put login shell stuff. Mm -hmm. This file is not read by bash if bash profile or bash login exists, but I didn't see that they did. Just bash logout, bash history, bash RC. Okay, so then right here. Uh, mount uh, source trees from pet power plant. That ought to do it. So, again, um, right, right now, nothing in trees. I'm going to SSH in passwordlessly. It's going to take a little extra long. And trees has stuff in it. We're almost there. I'm almost ready to get rid of trees.old. Uh, the other thing I want to do is see if I can really work here. So, for example, uh, I'm not going to try to do git operations here. I learned that one. In fact, yeah. Let's just go over here and go documents, trees, package source, git, and update that thing. This is using the host Mac, nice and fast. We can check for file system coherence. If we go into trees, package source, git, this is the thing with network file systems. They could have some latency. Probably not as much latency as me typing. But if I go into X11, I'm looking at the last line on the bottom. One X image source. It's there. It was created in the update, and we can see it from the Pi. So what's left is, uh, can I naively edit something? Let's see. Trees, packagers, git, make file. It's the top level packagers, make file. Um, Schmons was here. Save. Quit. Delete it from the bottom one. Look in the top one. That is all tolerably fast for a Raspberry Pi. Uh, can I actually do a build? Is the next question. From this package source tree, if I can, that feels pretty good to me. So let's see what we can do about that. 
This will take a moment. Actually, let's do a simpler check. If I go into NetDJB DNS, do I have this one installed? Do I have this one installed? No. So let's have some fun. See if I can get it installed. Be make install clean. Yeah, it looks like uh, I have the right permissions. Uh, the updates travel in both directions for at least basic operations. And if I can, the build, like I said, the build is not happening in the uh, SSHFS mounted file system. It's happening locally in var temp. Um, but if I can work the way that I need to work, then this is finished. And then we can check out what's what's left in trees.old. My guess is nothing. So I'm going to assume that's going well, and I'm going to open another connection into Schleier Pi, and we can start clearing out the old crap from trees.old. Anything left here? What did I change? Hmm. That's coming from dot files. I might have <laughs> some catching up to do here. Uh, Vim model MR config, Ben Mills. Okay. And Nord Vim. These are just changing from git to HTTPS. So I'll keep that. Uh, I get config in place? Yeah, okay. this file. Oh, yeah, right. I would have done a checkout without a git key because I didn't have one at the time. We should be able to fix that now. Yeah. So we'll do this in the other direction. Git remote set URL origin git at github.com schmons.files.git See if there's anything. Yeah, yeah, probably. No? Okay. Then do a push. Awesome. SSH keys. That's how they work. Uh, in that case, any other branches? For sure not. Anything else that I missed somehow? Nope. Bye bye custom copy of dot files checkout. On to the next one. Git remote dash v. What? Not a git? What is this? It's not anything. Okay. Where are we? We're on master. Git status. Can I do? Yeah. Got my shortcuts. Mm. Yeah, must be fine. So then, I'm sure I didn't work on anything with local branches here. Just had a checkout. That's enough. Uh, package is current. Empty. And package source CVS. This is going to be a savings. Um, I don't think I had anything custom. I just checked this out. Uh, yeah, I'm sure enough of that because I just made this. So that's going to free us up a fair amount. Right now, 2.5 gigs free. 
give it a minute. DJBDNS is not a large piece of software, but a Raspberry Pi from 2000, I don't know, 12, 11, 13, is not a fast piece of hardware. So it takes a little while. I got a lot of packages running on this machine. I can show you in just a moment. Things are happening. They're working that secure digital card as hard as it's been worked in a long time. Is my magic wand charged enough now? What is up? It's a funny name. We're still waiting. I will futz around with this thing majigger. It is Bluetooth Spotlight. Maybe it's not charged enough yet. When it works, uh, and <laughs> when the software works, it lets me highlight part of the screen. And it's pretty cool. Mm, we'll see. It's been a while. DJB DNS is almost compiled. It's building its installer program. go. It's running it. In just a moment, this all looked very normal so far. Moment of truth is at hand. Oh, I can think of uh, another setting I should make. And that is um, now that I have the network file system, I can collect the binary packages onto the host machine machine where we're getting the source tree from and I do do that. I'll show you what I mean. This is the Mac Mini. And these are some platforms that I'm building packages for, the package source. And I see this one. Hey, I think it might have just worked. Yeah, I think my settings already had that. So now it is the case that I can say TNSIP, schmanz.com, beautiful. And it is the case that if I want to see where I'm collecting binary packages for this platform, let's see why it did that. It's because I have a setting in here. Right here. So machine platform is what works out to where those binary packages got put. And that is exactly what I want. That way, someday, I can blow this thing away and package add all that stuff that I will have built by then. Um, yeah, very cool. So how many packages do I have installed on here? Three hundred twenty-two. I have Qmail, as you might guess. 
Yeah. It's a 32-bit test platform. Why? It's right there. Hmm, that demo sucked. <laughs> okay, uh, how are we doing with removing package source CVS? We have another, we started with 2.5 gigs free. We have another gig point one free. This is good news. I guess while we're waiting, let's figure out what's up with Qmail. I thought I had that running. Um, tell it. NC. Somebody there. Probably XM or whatever the Debian default is. No. Just really slow. Um, do I have rc.d.boot? Maybe not. Oops. I do. So then it should be the case. Come back to that. Okay, yeah, finish deleting package source CVS. And with that, that's the end of trees.old. Life is good. I have a lot more space free, and I'm going to do a lot less churn trying to run Git or CVS even directly on the secure digital card. Let's get Qmail running. So that was some package source. That was kind of some infrastructure for package source. And now I would like to do something that I'm often doing, which is testing my packaging of Qmail, not Qmail in particular. And so it should be the case that when I say this, it'll say five things are not initialized. Yeah, right. So here's what we can do. Qmail send, I want yes. Qmail queue read, I want yes. That's how you can run mail queue uh, and have it just work. Qmail smtpd, nah. Qmail ofmpd, that's the submission service, no. The pop3 service, no. Uh, and let's see if we have any other kind of mailer running. Postfix, xm. Send now. <laughs> what do we, just what do we have? <laughs> Maybe not any. No mailer. We have no mailer. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, that's a good choice. Uh, what made it go? It's installed from the Debian package. I'm looking right in the middle. User has been no mailer send. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, so this just passes everything through to my mail server. Okay, that's good then. I don't want to run Qmail. Uh, but I do want those things set properly. Just explicitly to know. What else do we have in rc.d that we could check? Dovecot and rspamd should also be no. Those are relatives of my mail server. My, my personal mail server uses them, and so there's a meta package in package source that brings them in. Uh, another thing I could do uh, 
Please install this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need a B for B make. And this will give me some RC.d scripts for DJVDNS. And I could very well run a local caching server and let that be turned on and then restart the Raspberry Pi and make sure it still comes up. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Um, before I do that, I think this is how NSLOOKUP works. No. Uh, DNSQR. There's a way to tell DNSQR which resolver to use. And I could try telling it localhost to see if there is one already. Isn't there? DNS cache IP, yeah. Type name. And that should take a moment and time out, I would expect. Right. And now, if I do what I'm told here, oh uh, yeah, what do we have in resolve.conf? That's probably programmatically written. Uh, okay, I'm not going to mess with that right now, but I will set these to no, except for that one, x for DNS equals no, tiny DNS equals no, uh, RBL DNS equals no, and DNS cache equals yes. And then, when I do this, and then when I do that, yep, and then it can work. Uh, so the thing to watch for now DNS cache has been started. What I'm going to demonstrate for you now, and then I think that'll do it for our stream for today, is um, the integration of package source rc.dscripts, which are in the NetBSD style, into a non-NetBSD system. This, again, is a Raspberry Pi running Raspbian. It could be running NetBSD. It has been running NetBSD, but it is running Raspbian. But that's OK. Package source, don't care. It's integrating it, the ability to run its boot scripts from the system's boot scripts, whatever those are. And so this number is going to change. But it won't be zero when SlyerPy comes back up. <laughs> I don't have any kind of a console on this machine. If something goes wrong, I'll call my parents and ask them to, I don't know, Connect an HDMI monitor to the thing? I'm not sure. It'll take a moment.
So we are nearing the end of our package source-ish Qmail adjacent stream session. Speed demon. <laughs> okay, that's a better error. It's got some. Hey now. Okay, so it got a network address, but SSHD hasn't been started yet. That's my that's my wish. Any minute now. There we are. And DNS cache is running with a different PID. And if we talk to it on purpose, it can answer the question. I'm not going to go into making it the system resolver. That is not that interesting, and I don't actually care that much for this machine. Uh, so what I will do instead is not confuse myself later by wondering why that's running and tell it not to do that next time. So I stopped it manually and now it won't come back up on boot. That is good enough for me. Cool. So this has been another episode of Amitai Hacking on Open Source Software. Uh, next time we will probably do either more actual packaging, I have some packages I want to make for package source, or more not QMail programming. I have some bugs I need to fix and some pull requests I need to fix and other things I need to fix and fixes I need to fix. Fix, fix, fix. So thanks for watching this stream as I get my streaming setup ironed out and see you next time.